So you're saying it's a traumatic injury. Hello, Palpation Nation. I am back from the dead. Oh, I was so sick this last week, and I was doing pre-breeding palpations and heifers all week, and I just didn't have it in me to vlog. But I'm back. It's Sunday afternoon call. Uh, I got some boys with me. I have uh, Kale from Northern Alberta. He's my mentee. Then we also have uh, Tommy with Tommy from Mississippi. Tom Coy. We got a down cow. We got some postmortems. And it's calving season. Might even have a little calving. Yesterday was prolapse day. I did two urine prolapses yesterday. They're my favorite. <laughs> hey, Tommy. Jeet. Jeet, yeah. <laughs> no, it's you. Jump, too. Tell you what. We going up yonder? Yeah. <laughs> Super impressed with kind of. I see other signs. Hey, keep going. Go. So, flow of blood is from the right heart into the lungs, out the left heart. So, it was likely some downstream congestion it was causing backup of fluid into the lungs. So, I need to even back up past the right heart into the liver here. See how it's like super rounded that edge is there? It should be a little bit, it should be a lot crisper. Than that. So, we call that cr chronic passive congestion. So, the dark red areas there are the areas of congestion, and the tan areas are actually where the, the yeah. liver cells have died and they're fibrosing yeah. now. I call that a no, not quite a nutmeg liver, right? Yeah. So we got left-sided heart failure and right-sided heart yep. failure. Beautiful. So that's a feedlot diagnosis. Diagnosis. Congestive heart failure. You see a little bit of edema around by the... He's so frozen. Yeah. <laughs> you, most of these, when they're still alive, they'll have a lot of edema in their brisket here and under their jaw as well, too. And then the... Uh, it's more common to see in the black animals. There's a heritable component in terms of uh, high altitude disease, is what is it they would yeah. call it. So their ability to uh, deal with our our two thousand our two thousand foot elevation here on out on the flatlands. Wow. Please. Good job on the postmortem, Tommy. I try my best. <laughs> What'd you find? We found congestive heart failure, left and right sided congestive heart failure. And uh, one of those black cows, eh? Yeah. You're getting pretty good at the postmortem. Are you, have you learned something or were you that good when you came? Mm, I've learned a lot. I've learned y'all's way of doing it. Yeah, also. <laughs> I'm getting faster. I joked with Megan the other day that uh, she, I told her when, before we even started, we had five to do. I said, you're going to do four to my one. <laughs> and when we finished, what'd she do? Four to my one. <laughs> It's okay. You'll get better. You'll get better. I'll race you on the last day. Okay. Okay. It's we we're finished the uh, postmortem. We have a down cow to look at now. She's out in pasture, and then we have a few more postmortems for the day. So it's super busy calving. Uh, Tommy helped me with a uh, uterine prolapse yesterday, yeah. um, and we're hoping to get him into a C-section before the week ends. Tommy, wh where's your hometown? Pontotoc, Mississippi. Pontotoc. Yeah. How, how do you spell that? P-O-N-T-O-T-O-C. Isn't that Potomac? Uh-uh. It's different? <laughs> yeah. Is it different spelling? Uh-huh. What does that There's mean? There's no A in it. Oh, what does that mean? Pontotoc? Yeah, what does Pontotoc no mean? 
an, our town motto is like land of the hanging grapes or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, I was supposed to, to ask you that. on Instagram <laughs> what a hanging, like what's hanging grapes mean? <laughs> Funny thing, we yeah. have like no grapes. <laughs> so why do they call it the land of the hanging? I guess they're talking about muscadines. Have you ever heard of muscadines? <laughs> it's, it's similar to a grape, but like they have a big, they have a, like a real hard shell and they have a big seed in the middle of them. Did you say mastodons? Uh, muscadines. Musky Dons. Dons. Dan? <laughs> Musky Dons? Musky Don. Musky Dun. <laughs> Dine. Dine! Musky what? Don. Musky. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking at the still on my way home. Sometime, devil on my back, whiskey on my bread, and back at the shag. So she had probably eaten and just laid down here. Melt at a hole for herself. So, Tommy, as we're, uh, as you're doing your physical exam, talk us through the five M's of down cows. For so Kale knows uh, what some differentials to work through are. There's mastitis, metritis, metabolic, massive infection, and musculoskeletal. All right, I'll remember two of those. So cows, cows won't go down unless they got one of those five M's. Okay. So, mastitis, that infection of that udder, they can be really septic from that. Okay. Metritis, so infection of the uterus, they can be really septic and go down from that. Okay. Massive infection is our other M, it just means any other sort of massive infection in terms of lungs, a big abscess, peritonitis would be the biggest ones in, in cows, uh, and then septicemia in general. So that's the, the three. And then the last two are the, probably the most common would be the metabolic. So anything that's low calcium, low magnesium, low potassium. So we got to rule out the metabolic. And then the last one is musculoskeletal. Is a broken leg or broken back or pinched nerve would be the, the last one. And if you rule out, you know, start ruling out all the M's, there's no like zebra in the in the mix it's just gonna be one of those ones so she probably doesn't have mastitis we are all finished looking at that cow unfortunately we're gonna have to put her down she has a pretty significant musculoskeletal injury likely a prolapsed disc or a fractured spine we could attempt treatment with steroids she's pregnant so that would abort her uh, her prognosis is pretty poor anyways so we're just gonna go ahead and euthanize her and take a brain sample for the BSE program. Okay, we just pulled up at the feedlot. We were about an hour drive. Uh, I don't know how many we have, two or three. We're gonna get both guys gloved up and messy. And I'm just gonna sit there and look pretty in my pink coveralls, y'all. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> my woman holla. Pleasant dollar, Mississippi blues don't feed us tomorrow. I don't need no Mississippi blues. Don't give me no Mississippi blues. I don't want your Mississippi blues. Don't need those Mississippi blues. Is this normal? Yeah, almost normal. Uh, a little bit pale, okay, but but say. no pneumonia. That's what the consistency of a lung should look like. But he is pale. What do you mean consistency? Like that nice aeration, like beautiful aeration of his lungs. Like that's yeah, that's what it should look like for sure. But it's whiter. It's a little more pink than it should be. What'd you get on that one, Tommy? Oh, uh, free grass, free gas bloat, not grass. <laughs> free grass bloat. Free grass, free grass, grass for everyone. <laughs> uh, what signs did you see? Uh, we saw a hind and edema. Yep. And then... All that jello there. Yep. 
What else? Well, we, it's kind of a, I don't know, we just found, found some uh, where all the intestines and liver have been kind of shoved forward by the increased size of the rumen. Yep. Looks oh. like you had lots of gas in the guts there. Same too, the cecum was very distended with gas in all the small intestines there. Any cranial congestion? You think that musculature is darker? Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. Lots of cranial congestion. So we're just looking at this calf's lungs here. They seem pretty pale and we found a source of the blood loss. So he had a fairly hemorrhagic enteritis going on. Uh, his guts are hyperemic and it's all really bloody, purulent digesta. So he'll be in enteritis, hemorrhagic enteritis. Uh, we're at our last postmortem of the day. Tommy at first found this beautiful kidney that had this nephritis. Uh, there was miliary abscesses and infarcts all throughout that nasty kidney. So we started looking for the point source of infection and that brought Tommy to the heart. And when he, he noticed the heart was enlarged, uh, that calf going into heart failure. It's a pretty big floppy heart. And when he opened it up and looked at the valves, there was a spectacular vegetative valvular endocarditis that was showering bacteria all through the rest of his body. Good work, Tommy. Yeah. Have you seen anything like that before? Oh, yeah. Oh. So you're saying it's a traumatic injury? Yeah, um, can, so it, it would be defined as congestion. Um, and unfortunately, dexamethasone only works for inflammation and doesn't do anything for congestion. The only thing that works on congestion is time. But Tommy will certainly make sure that there's nothing else going on wrong with the little baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to breathe when you got a little bit of swelling, isn't it? What do you think of her swollen head calf? Does she have any trouble having it? I don't know, I was sleeping. Unknown. <laughs> all, right. all right, we're all finished the day. That little calf uh, needs some colostrum and has a congestion of its head, so Tommy because Dr. Cody did not have any colostrum in his <laughs> truck, is gonna pick some up from the clinic and run back and tube that calf. And yeah, that's it for the day. So thanks for coming out, guys. Did you learn anything? Yes. Yes. Sure. Jackson is not a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy got an epic Instagram photo with himself and his uh, little endocarditis case. He was so excited. You're kind of a cow nerd. <laughs> okay, how would how would you uh how would you end it in your best Mississippi slang? See y'all later. <laughs> I come home sober and just one time. We got the children. Stay out of my gas hole. <laughs> <laughs>